Today on Damien on Design, we're going to learn how to pare down. I don't even know that word. It's not in my lexicon, Damien. I, other than we've been talking about this so much, <laughs> about downsizing. Everyone, everyone talks true. about downsizing. But I love the pare down analogy, and I love the logo as we get to meet our guest today and encourage people to go on to her website and take a look and see a very clever, I think, very elegant pear down, which is the logo is a literally the peel of the pear being taken uh, off the pear. It is clever. And joining us today on <coughs> Damien on Design with Damien Farrell, local architect here on the Lucy Ann Lance Show each week, we welcome in Brenda Brown, owner of Annex of Pear Down. And this is interesting how your business and then the resulting store all came together. We're going to talk more about the store and its wonderful finds on part two of our show next week. Brenda, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank you. It's delightful to be here. So why do we collect so much stuff? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> and there's so much stuff. Um, I don't know why we collect. I think that uh, it just comes to us, and we don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. So what do you see in your business? I see a lot of books. I see a course, lot yeah. of, of books. People just have such an emotional attachment to books. It's really hard for them to get rid of them. Yeah. Especially in this town, don't you oh, think? Oh, yeah, yeah. True. Definitely true. in this town. Yeah. And, and, and I don't necessarily encourage people to get rid of them. Uh, because if they're meaningful and you want them, we just figure out how to keep them and keep them without so, being in your way and taking up space that then is bothersome. So um, so the people who are coming to you, are these mostly people who are literally downsizing their homes, or are people coming to you just to help declutter and clean out and simplify within their existing home? Well, I have a variety of customers. Mm -hmm. um, with the pair down, they're... they're they run the gamut from professional people who have large, lovely homes, family homes that they've mm -hmm. raised children in. Now they're empty nesters, have been empty nesters for a period of time. They're thinking of downsizing a career, uh, perhaps having a second home in another location, uh, thinking about stairs, thinking about what happens with their life in the next 10, 15 years and how they need to live and what, what their physical space needs to be to accommodate mm -hmm. the way they want to live. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people who are really thinking about their financial situation, their physical situation, um, making plans, taking control. All the, and so now they've moved from a four or 5,000 square foot home with mm -hmm. three, four, or five bedrooms into a condo uh, or uh, a smaller home, yeah. less yard, less house to keep all the way down to an individual who is a single person, always has been, and lives in an apartment about the size of this room and has now finally come to grips with the fact that they don't have enough room for everything <laughs> that they have. So they're upsizing. And, 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 and they're upsizing. They just want to find floor space, square footage. Uh, so it runs the gamut. But uh, oftentimes it, it, it's, an, it's an individual or a company, or excuse me, a couple or a family who has come to the realization they want to live differently. They want to so, live differently in their space. Sometimes it even means that they're going to move uh, their, 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 most of their living space to the main floor and be able to close off a second floor and not heat it or turn it into guest suites or a caregiver's unit. So there are a variety of there reasons. There are a variety And of a variety reasons. of ways of doing this, I imagine. Yes. Uh, Brenda Brown is our guest, and she is the owner of Pear Down, uh, which uh, helps out... The uh, empty nesters, it sounds like everyone, uh, downsize successfully. She also has a store called Annex of Pear Down, which is on Ann Arbor's Old West Side. But, you know, I know we're not going to talk to the store today. We're doing that next week. But I just want you to reach over and get your coat very quickly. Sure. <laughs> this is so beautiful. And for our YouTube audience, I want them to see this. You made this coat. Yes. How did you do this? It is beautiful. Oh, oh, hold it up, hold it up. That the is, coat is up. made from um, upholstery fabric. <laughs> upholstery fabric. Look at that. Uh, it's beautiful. a simple A-line coat. I uh, found vintage buttons. Actually, the buttons came first. Oh, okay. The buttons came first. I had those 
for some period of time. I found the fabric. I, I was drawn to the colors in the fabric. Look at the lining on the um, inside, yeah. too. Every, it just the attention to detail is just impeccable. It's beautiful. Uh, and the uh, sleeves are gorgeous as well. Describe those sleeves. Uh, so, so they're, again, an, a, a basic flare sleeve. Mm -hmm. The bottom of the coat and the bottom of the sleeve, a significant chunk, probably four or five inches, um, mm -hmm. is uh, edged with mm -hmm. a, yet a different fabric. Uh, that was the hard piece uh, to find the fabric. I knew I wanted to line it wow. uh, or to border it. Uh, so finding the fabric to, to work was was the hunt, if you will. The other pieces I had, they came together nicely. It is beautiful. I and mean, a very fall coat, lovely fall colors. Um, the reason why I wanted you to describe that and for our YouTube audience to actually see that is you actually repurpose a lot of these items. When you pare down, we're not necessarily talking about throwing out. That's correct. Right. So, so um, pare down means, uh, to me, it means to... to be rid of the things that you don't use, don't want, and keep the treasures. So if the treasure is your grandkids' pictures on the refrigerator, mm -hmm. on the refrigerator, 20 pictures, 20 photographs, 20 little uh, crayon drawings, is clutter and um, stuff. It's stuff that you don't necessarily want, but you do want it. You don't want to be rid of it, you just don't want it... it cluttering your space. I don't like anything on my refrigerator. I don't have anything <laughs> on my <Me> refrigerator <laughs> either. It just so, makes me a little nutty. So, so walk me through, walk us through a typical first conversation. All right, Luciana and I, let's, let's role play this one. Luciana okay. and I, we are married. I have this collection of wow, old I, German that's, that's pottery. That's an upgrade for me today. <laughs> yeah, of old German pottery that came down from my grandmother. There, there are 40 pieces of this stuff. We're downgrading into a small thing. You can't stand them. Um, you have a collection of glass frogs, which I've never understood. All right, and they take up about six rows in a display cabinet where I would actually like to put some of my architectural awards. So, oh, you're so typical. So, so, oh, 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 we're typical. You're so typical. All right, no, I think so, she meant you as a man. Oh. <laughs> And you, you as a man, you as a couple, you All as right. collectors, uh -huh. and All right. people so walk who have through lived this the life. For us. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So you've lived the life, and now you have stuff that either you need, you, you're you're going to move, or you're going to use your space differently. It doesn't matter why. It it what matters is you've taken a first step. You've realized that you need to do things differently, to live in your space differently, to um, accommodate what's next. So if it's possible. The ideal situation is, if it's possible, if you have the space or you're moving to a new, a new digs or whatever, um, if you can clear out the space that you're going to want to live in, uh, so you have an empty condo, mm -hmm. or you are able to take all of the pottery and all of the frogs and put them in the garage for a little while, if you, if you can clear out the space, in that process, you're going to find a small amount of stuff that... It can just go in the trash or in the recycle or give to your niece or whatever. Okay. They become so there's obvious. an interim step you're suggesting. We, we, there's a demilitarized zone here but with, of the right. frogs on the pottery. That's okay, correct. Right. Everything, it hopefully. Goes in the garage for a bit. Everything okay. goes to the garage. Right. I can live with it, honey. Can you? Oh, well, well sure, Damien. <laughs> so, so while we're boxing things up to get them out to the garage, you'll find a small number of things, you know, a broken frog or a duplicate frog or a pottery that you're thinking... That didn't come from the family. Okay. Where did this come from? This doesn't need to be in this collection. Right. Uh, I, can, I can be rid of this. So a small amount of things will just go away while we're packing stuff up. And while we're packing stuff up, I try to uh, get you to consider two piles, three piles, mm -hmm. in the garage. Okay. One that is clearly treasures I can't live without and you can't make me get rid of. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And then a pile that probably I'm going to ultimately get rid of. I, I, this pile eh, it can probably go. In fact, I just have to be pushed over the edge a little yeah. bit. Okay. And, and, right. and while we're packing it up and you're handling things and you get a good look at it, some of that just comes about. Mm -hmm. I never ask the question, what do you want to get rid of? Well, let's get rid pick, go to your go to the room, go mm -hmm. to the pottery shelf and pick something to get rid of. That doesn't work. You can't do that. Oh, you can't. Okay. So... While you're packing things up to get them out of the way, you'll find a few things that you'll come to that conclusion on your own. So will you. So we, we put those in your car, hopefully, so that you don't 
aren't tempted to bring them back. You can get them to the Habitat for Humanity or to your niece or whatever, wherever they're going. And, um, and the treasures are clearly the treasures, and they're set in a, a corner in their box carefully, whatever. And then there's the big pile. Okay. The, the yeah, I don't know. Don't know quite well. No, yeah. no, quite well. I really don't want to get rid of it, but is it a treasure? Yeah, I don't know. So, then we configure the space, mm -hmm. the room. We put the shelving in. We put the infrastructure. We, we reconfigure the space to become the room you want it to be or the rework the floor. You know, we're putting new kitchen cabinets yeah, in. Very if that's smart. What's You're going introducing on. the practical aspects right. of... The physical aspects, yeah, the, the physical, limitations. Get the it. limitations. Get we're it. widening okay. the doors. We're putting in new cabinets. We're, you know, putting in new carpet. Whatever it is mm -hmm. to make this space now uh, comfortable and workable with the lifestyle that you want, that you're moving to. Then, when that happens and it's lovely, and we've made all kinds of decisions about paint and fabrics and carpeting, and oh, and and you may be working with a contractor to do these things. There's a combination of effort here, or we may just be doing it on our own. We may decide that the drapes are coming down, but it's fabric that you absolutely love, but they're getting a little little shabby, they're wearing out, they're getting bleached, so we find a couple of yards of the fabric that's still in good shape, and we recover the dining room chairs with it. Or we make a coat out of it. Or, well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. But, but there, you know, it was good fabric to begin with, or it was sentimental fabric, yep. or it really is a color you can't live without. It's what you want to continue with. And um, so why throw it away? Mm -hmm. re re recover the dining room chairs with that beautiful silk, some, okay. some amount of it. The rest of it is... A very diplomatic process. Yeah. Yeah. So well and, done, we, right? and we do the, the <clears throat> same with the things that are important. Those are part of the treasures that you really don't want to be rid of. Mm -hmm. We take the, the grandkids' pictures and drawings, we laminate them, okay. and we line the kitchen drawers with them. So oh. What a clever idea. So there now when go. you open the drawer to cook, oh there's their little faces, gosh. but they're not all over the refrigerator. Is it, and what a keepsake for years to come. Exactly. Isn't that a nice idea? And you can always, you know, one drawer per kid, one drawer per grade, Boy, whatever. Oh, you just took it over the edge. Never We're fine. All the tension it. is gone. <laughs> We're happy about the move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the frogs are coming. None of the pottery's <laughs> coming. <laughs> now that's a good husband. Um, Brenda, I want to get back to the books. The plethora yeah. of books. Mm -hmm. And you said you had artful ways of doing things with books. Give us an example of that. So the things to do with books. It, uh, books are very mu are like any other possession. There are the treasures. Right. There are the things, uh, I guess I don't really need three paperbacks, three copies of the same paperback. I can, I can get rid of two of them, maybe all three of them. And then there's the I don't knows. So when you put them, when you bring them back in, there are books that you, reference books, things that you get at constantly. Well, they need be, to be between belly button and shoulder on the shelves. Mm -hmm. That's what you're getting at. That's what you're using. Mm -hmm. Anything below that, you maybe set some furniture in front of because you only have just so much space. You don't want to get rid of those books. They need to go on the bookshelf, but, you know, maybe some furniture can go in front of them. The things, the, the collections, the vintage books, the mm -hmm. collectibles, the, the first editions, they need to go, you know, shoulders up. They're generally bound in beautiful leathers. They're, they're pretty. Mm -hmm. they're, they're attractive. They're beyond just books. I, I was in book manufacturing as a career for 40 years. Oh. So, okay. you know, pay, some of all of this comes from page design and layout. And, right. Um, White space is huge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Typography, mm -hmm. oh, the demise of type typography <laughs> with the digital world. Um, those are elegant things, and you know the gold leafing, stamping, all those things on books. So they become art. Mm -hmm. They so you want those shoulder high and up. Maybe they're mixed in with some of the pottery um, to break up the to break up the books. A small mm -hmm. collection of the frogs <laughs> on one, you know, these shelves mm -hmm. and the pottery on these shelves. So if you have a collection, you don't necessarily have to keep it all together, but you want pieces of it or I, I think that it's important for collections to not be scattered they need to be curated and they need to be uh, together but okay. um, there isn't anything wrong with having some frogs here and some frogs there mm -hmm. and pottery here okay. I mean right. that's a nice balance yeah. that works so those treasures when we bring those treasures back in we fill the house with the treasures we begin to put the treasures in because the treasures you know, a dresser that was your great-grandmother's now maybe becomes, uh, 
it, it, you put it in the entryway or a stair landing, and now it houses your photo books. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a dresser any longer. Right. You don't, you know, those kids have moved. Right. <laughs> They're in Denver now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, so living in Ann Arbor, where do all the books go? Who takes all these paper you know, paperbacks excuse me, that were bought for a summer read on the beach somewhere? and has been sitting on the shelf unnecessarily for 15 years. Well, I know Books by Chance does that. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, they do? Okay. They, they buy that from you. There's some kind of a cooperative type deal that oh, there is. Okay. There are places where you can sell them, mm -hmm. and but there are lots of places where you can donate them. Right. You oh, good. Need, and, Glad and to hear that. Depending on That's what they are. That's a selfish question. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason to keep paperback books? I just don't. Unless it's a cookbook, I just don't keep a paperback I, book. I think that if it's something you're going to read again, mm -hmm. well, I mean... I'm a once-and-done person. Me too, I, <laughs> yeah. and I mean that. I mean, I, I look through my, you know, shelves of paperbacks thinking, okay, that one I bought, you know, in St. Thomas, that one on the beach in Bahamas, and, <laughs> and it's just like, why? Um, what well, on earth for? You I know? think what's interesting about what Brenda's saying here is you really want to take everything, put it out somewhere else, the garage or whatever you have a room, and then... Build your room back up. Exactly. After you've decided, you know, so what's important. So sort of important. distance yourself from it, yeah. in, a, distance, in a sense. Distance right. yourself from it. Bring in the treasures. The things, and when you go back to the garage, to that corner where you put the treasures, um, most of them will come back in because you were, you were making, they, they, they are a part of your life that you don't mm. get rid of. Uh, most of that comes back in, but you'd be surprised. Some of it goes on, eh, I don't know, pile. Mm -hmm. um, so then you get this space, and now you have this lovely new space that's working the way you want it. It's pretty. It's, it looks good. It, it's mm -hmm. looking the way that you want it. And you're a little bit loath to clutter it up. So we go, oh, we go to, the, to the, I don't know, pile, and we shop. You need a, you need a dresser. You need a nightstand. You need, um, you need a lamp. We go and we shop from that pile to see mm -hmm. what we might use in that spot. Sometimes you find something, sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there are three lamps, none of them are going to work. You tell yourself, it's okay to take those three lamps to the consignment shop mm -hmm. or to give them away or whatever, and I'm going to go purchase one new lamp mm -hmm. for the thing that I need. Okay. It's okay. I, uh, you, are, you can allow your... Uh, I tried. I shopped. I think, too, you look at your stuff differently when you've put it in these piles, don't That's you? That's right. It's not in the yeah. same location. And, it's and not it, a familiarity anymore right. that you can't break from. And, Brenda, all of this is very freeing. It <laughs> is. <laughs> next very week, liberating. Next week on our show with Brenda Brown uh, from Pear Down, we are going to be talking about uh, her store as well, which you can find over on Ann Arbor's west side. It's Annex of Pear Down. It's right near Malik's. Uh, service station, right. where we go all the time, so mm -hmm. I have to come and see you. Uh, new and vintage home furnishings and fabrics, and so there's a place for all of these items. And they, they get a new life as well. And we get a new life because we're freed of all of this. Yes, <laughs> wow, really indeed. wonderful. And you work with clients one-on-one? -on -one? Is, is, I do. Mm -hmm. all right. And for more information, people can go online to annexofpairedown.com, P-A-R-E, down.com. And learn more. Uh, for just people to understand, approximately how much would it cost to have someone work with you? Uh, uh, I charge $100 for the first consultation. Mm -hmm. A couple of hours, I come on site, I see what's going on. And then I have an hourly rate for uh, on site or off site work that I may do. And some of the work I may do is rework those curtains into something else or mm -hmm. uh, uh, make remake something, re redo something that Wonderful. goes back on site. Oh, so you make me a code. <laughs> Brenda, great getting to know you. Looking forward to next week as well. With Damien Farrell, local architect with Damien Farrell Design Group. You can go to dfdgonline.com and learn more and also access the YouTube feed with yes. all the uh, great videos from these conversations. Yep, four years worth now. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I can't mm -hmm. believe that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you, Damien, and thank, thank you, you, Brenda. Thank more you, coming Brenda. up on the Lucianne Land Show, Ann Arbor's talk station, 1290 WLBY.